hope you're having a great day. Today we, we're going to talk about the gut. There's a lot of information about the gut and we've created a lot of videos about the gut. But what are those simple things that we can start right now, today, for better gut health? And why gut health? Is it a fad? No, it's the truth. For the longest time we've known that, but it was never focused on. <clears throat> Think of any disease and it has a relation directly or indirectly with the gut. Let's start from the head. Your hair related to the gut. Several other reasons for everything we're talking about, but the gut is fundamental. You have problems with your hair, premature grain, your falling hair, thinning hair, autoimmune conditions like a psoriatic a scalp, whatever it is, alopecia, the gut is involved. Let's go inside of the head, your brain. You have brain problems, you have cognitive health problems, memory, whatever it is. There could be several reasons, but the gut plays a huge role in prevention and in possibly getting better. Let's come now to the inside of your mouth. Like we have a microbiome in our gut, we have a microbiome in our mouth. They're interconnected. They work on the function of bacteria, good bacteria and bad bacteria. So yep, for our dental health, for our mouth, for our ulcers, for our breath, all of that, again, is connected with the gut. Thyroid gland connected directly with the gut. The heart, the liver, the lungs, your hormonal health, your skin, acne on your face, all of this is connected with the gut. Like I said, there could be several other reasons, but the gut is one of them. So it makes it the most important thing that we need to focus on. Your immune system, inflammation, even obesity. Sometimes you're dieting, you're working out, but you're not losing that stubborn belly fat. Why? It involves your gut. Your gut regulates hormones. Hormones is one of the biggest reasons why you have poor weight issues, or you're struggling to lose weight, you're struggling to lose fat, besides other options like overeating and greed and all of that stuff. So your gut is everything. So now that we've established that you need to look at your gut in every protocol of treatment, you're taking a medicine, there's some amount of damage that's going to happen to the gut, whether it's an antibiotic, a steroid. But if you put in the, red, the right mechanisms to balance it, it's fine. We're not against medication. If you need an antibiotic, you've got to take an antibiotic, but you've got to take it the right way. You've got to make sure you have your prebiotics, your probiotics, your, your B complex going into your system, your vitamin C through your foods or supplementation. And of course, you've got to look at rebuilding your gut bacteria that's been wiped out by the medication. So there's nothing wrong with medication except the misuse of medication, self-medication, finding quick fixes and not making changes in our lifestyle at a root cause level so we have to go on popping more and more pills. That's the problem with medicine. Otherwise, it's needed. It can save lives. Now, coming straight into solution mode. <clears throat> a lot of people get into the complexities of probiotics, 25 billion, 50 billion. So it's, it's okay. They all have their role. But what is the best way for us to start with great gut health. Using your own body's intelligence. Everything in life is not about adding more and more. Sometimes it's about subtracting. Sometimes it's about depleting. Sometimes it's about removing. And sometimes it's allowing your own intelligence within you to do a job that it's meant to do. Think about it. Our gut has the ability to clean itself. Our gut has the ability to basically recreate its microbiome. But we come in the way, humans come in the way. And how do we come in the way? It's very simple. That brings us to the first little thing that we can start doing today. I like to be an action-oriented person. Okay, everything that we talk about should be able to be put into action. Now, I can't force you to take that action. We hope you take the action, but without action, there is no movement. So you can listen to this video and say, oh, what a beautiful video. You can put it to action, and now the video is even more useful for you. So the first little thing that we do, fasting. It is in fasting that your gut starts to have the space and the place to repair itself. I'm not talking about crazy long fasts. If you like doing that, do it. I don't have a problem with it, but it's not necessary. It is necessary for certain people and certain conditions, but it is not necessary for us to do extreme fasting every day. Now let's understand the human gut, okay? I eat a meal. My body's gonna create digestion and there's gonna be a cleanup mechanism that also happens, all done by the intelligence of the body. Could take three hours, could take four hours, could take five hours. But hardly after eating my first meal, I have a snack. 
and then I have my second meal, and then I have a snack, and then I have my third meal, and maybe I'll munch on something before bedtime. Your digestive system never gets a break to stop, relax, clean itself, and do the cleaning action. It's always in digestion mode. The human body, the kidneys, the liver, the heart has to move from action to rest, action to rest, because repair, recovery, repair, recovery, action, recovery. That's how the human body has to work. If you're constantly stressing out your digestive system by eating all the time, even if it's healthy snacking, okay, you don't allow the intelligence of your body to do what it knows to do the best. It knows. Let me give you a simple example. Let's get to a little story. I recently launched my book in Jaipur <clears throat> and I was privileged to stay at the Taj Ramba Palace, treated like royalty, especially when it comes to food. So I was given a Rajasthani Thali for lunch. I don't know how many calories it, it, it was. I don't, I don't count calories, but it was filled with P.O. ghee. It had animal protein. It had vegetarian protein. It had the most amazing food, delicious meal. When I finished my meal, it took me an hour and a half to go through the entire process of having that tali with the dessert. I ate everything. <clears throat> I decided to listen to my body as to when I should eat my next meal because this was, a, this was very different from the way I eat. This was a lot of calories, a lot of protein, desserts, everything. So I said, now let me experiment with the feasting and fasting model. I wasn't hungry in four hours. I wasn't hungry in eight hours. I wasn't hungry in 12 hours. I was finally hungry. After 17 and a half hours, my body gave me a signal that, hey, start eating. Now, I'm not worried about the meal. I'm not worried about the dessert I consumed. The intelligence of my body took it brilliantly and managed it brilliantly without even possibly shifting my weight in the smallest possible way. Why? My body's intelligence digested, cleaned, finished its process beautifully, and informed me when I should take my next meal. Feasting and fasting. Obviously, we're not gonna do it every day, but the point is, there was no acidity, there was no bloating, there was no none of that. I just knew I had a really heavy meal. That's all, I felt that. I felt my energy levels crash because I don't usually eat carbohydrates at lunch. But the point is, I allowed the intelligence of my body to clean completely. No prebiotic, no pro probiotic, nothing. It did it on its own. I tell you the story just for you to realize that when we're constantly eating, we, we don't allow the intelligence of our body to work. There is no doctor or scientist who can tell you the exact probiotic that your gut needs. When your gut is built to trillions and trillions of different bacteria, viruses, fungi, all of that stuff, you can't be accurate with a probiotic. They work. Many times they don't work. Many times they cause complication. But the point is, first, learn to fast. You can fast between meals. Example, four hours. Now, if I, if, like, I know I get hungry after four to five hours because I practice this. So now my rhythm becomes four to five hours. You practice yours. Eat when you're hungry. Does this make your lunch one o'clock, one thirty, or two? Eat when you're hungry again. Does this make your dinner 6.30, 7 or 8? The point is if you have acidity in between and all of that stuff, you need to sort those problems out first. But finally, you find a rhythm that works. And it is so important that brings us to the second point of fasting. The fast between your dinner and your next day is also important. That can be 12 hours, that can be 14 hours, it's up to you. Don't put yourself into a box that society's put you into. Find out your own threshold. 16.8 is a scam. It works for some people. Some people put themselves in a box. Some people get results in 14 hours. Some people need 18 hours. Don't put yourself into a box. The West is very, very good at putting us in a box. And I have nothing against the West, but everything is out of a box. Medicine is out of a box. Nutrition is out of a box. Personal training is out of a box. Relationships is out of a box. The point is, no one's good or bad. There are just consequences of being in a box. Then you behave like everyone in a box. And when you're an individual, unique bio individual, how the hell can you live in a box? How can you be part of the herd? We can learn, we can unlearn, but then we gotta use common sense and wisdom to make the right decision for what is right for us. Some days I fast for 14 hours, some days 13 hours. Yesterday I did a really heavy workout that I enjoyed. And today I broke my fast in 12 hours because my body needed food for recovery. So you follow your own path, you build your own rhythm. You see, the gut works within rhythms. If you break the rhythm, 
You're not allowing your microbiome to repopulate the right way. You're not. So people prefer to do extended fasts, but not according to their rhythm. What would be the best rhythm is you have a fixed dinner time, a fixed morning time if you eat breakfast, a fixed lunch time, as per your rhythm. Because the human body works on rhythms. Do not break the rhythm. Your gut, your microbiome, everything is within rhythms of the body. So that's the first easiest thing that you can do for your gut. Fasting, in between meals, all of that. We do a whole nother video when we talk about it. Seed oils, refined oils, sugars, high fructose corn syrup, uh, that damages your gut more and more, no matter what you're doing. We will also talk about the vitamins and supplements that are great for your gut in a separate video. But for today, that one little thing that we can do is, you've watched my videos before, eat when you're physically hungry, not emotionally hungry. When your body really tells you, hey, it's time, it's time to eat. That is the time your body is telling you, I've finished the process of cleaning everything. I'm ready for food. I'm now ready for food, but the body's not even ready for food and we're putting more food into the human body. So today, the point is fasting. Tomorrow, we'll talk about the importance of nutrients, refined oils, sugar, and even the impact of sleep deprivation and chronic stress on your gut. Have a great day, everyone. Until next time, eat smart, move more, sleep right, breathe deep, and remember, you care is all about you.